Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to patreoncom slash macro patreoncom slash BKC. Uh, I haven't done a video in a, in a long time, and um, you know what is going on. Obviously, is extremely, extremely sad. Um, again, I am not a political type. I don't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm semi-autistic when it comes to politics, but. Um, spotting bullshitters and um, people that are causing harm to other people is kind of like my specialty you look at the you know <laughs> the Peter Schiff's of the world that were running around oh hyperinflation hyperinflation right to the Mike Normans oh MMT and the fiscal flows and mother of all shorts and you know the Logans oh I got my six point model and now we got the Trump right I, I never liked Trump. I just, he was never my uh, <laughs> my favorite guy, right? But it doesn't mean that, you know, that I should politically or for financial reasons not like uh, what he was doing until, obviously he was lying. Obviously he's going to run around and, and bullshit people. The guy's unfit, <clears throat> but... Obviously, w when it came to the COVID-19, you could really, really see the the damage that he was going to do to the U.S. And, and as you guys know, I was not very happy with COVID-19 on my Twitter feed. I've been talking about it, uh, even on my personal Facebook. I was talking about it back in February. I started tracking it back on January 21st. There was like 300 cases. I knew it was airborne. I knew it was going to be a, a big problem. And then you had the liberal hoax, and it's just a flu, and it's nothing, and it's overrated, and da 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 And I said, this is going to create a social economic uh, catastrophe. Um, now we have, uh, I, you know, so many people sat here and argued with me. Oh, the deaths are not enough. Oh, it's just, you know, it's just a hope. So we only have one, one death in 400 cases. Oh, you know, you're, you're spreading fear. Oh, you're doing this. Oh, you're panicking people. Oh, the, the stupid things that I heard. But, you know, 10 years of doing this, I'm, I'm used to it. I, it doesn't, it's like lint, right? Uh, off, off my lapel, just get off, you know. Oh, you're just a pilot. Oh, you're, you know, the, the list is endless. Of the uh, of the attacks that I received, and uh, now we have 100,006 106,000 deaths, 40 million people unemployed, uh, and if you think these riots uh, are not connected, I think you're wrong. Uh, again, it's not it's not the riots. The, the riots. Anytime people protest, you're gonna have these crazy people uh, who are 0.5 percent that are gonna go out. And they're going to start looting uh, and, and, cre and, and diverting attention from what the real problem is. Uh, and that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate uh, because this, this has been going on for decades um, where uh, black men have been murdered for no apparent reason. Uh, and uh, it, it's creating division. And you have a pandemic you have a lockdown you have a president that is not fit to unite uh, only to divide uh, and and this is the result and unfortunately in the middle of a pandemic this is going to make the situation worse not better so um, you know drink the Clorox you know put light up your ass do whatever you know these this is not this is not normal this is not it's not sane, and yet you have people protecting this this guy that, that that is completely nuts. He needs to be locked up. He's literally killed people um, by his inaction. Um, you know, we can kind of predict uh, that the COVID w would have this many deaths, and this is the infection, the R naught, and whatever. This is the infection rate. This is the whatever. We can make some kind of predictions based on that. And 
that were revised, obviously, as things improved and lockdowns and so forth. And people are like, oh, look, they revised it down. See, it's the bullshit. It's this. Oh, you know, they're spiking the numbers. Oh, you know, this is the problem with social media. Social media has created uh, a bunch of people that are grouping together with a bunch of ideas. And if, and if, they, if they see... Uh, you know, it's this herd mentality. If they see everybody else is kind of agreeing with a certain position, then they all flock to that, right? And it depends where you are in the political spectrum, from the extreme left to the extreme right and and everywhere else. But what seems to be getting lost is the middle. The middle, God forbid you say anything about both ends, you're an idiot. You know, they'll come and attack you on both ends. And again, for me personally, I don't care. You know, I'm 50 years old. You think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna care about what anybody else says? I don't care. I do my own analysis. I do my own, my own thing, and I'm gonna say it how it is. And I have the right to say it, just like anybody else has to say their stupid shit. Doesn't mean I'm right. No. Doesn't mean I'm right. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't mean they're right and I'm wrong. But, you know, you have this thing, in social media where people post things. Uh, and then if you give uh, an alternative view or an opposing view or whatever, oh, you know, you come to my page and you're going to, you know, you know what, you know what I got to say to these people? If you want people to agree with you, right, and you can post things and so you can get the whole, you know, that little stupid thumb up and, oh, I would do and say anything just to get the thumb up. If you want people just to agree with you, put it on your Facebook, Say, please, anybody who disagrees with what I say or has an alternative view, please don't post on my Facebook. And then nobody will. And then you can sit there with your confirmation bias and, uh, you know, self-reinforce the stupid things that you say. That's it. It's, it's that simple. But that's not what social media is supposed to be about, right? You're supposed to exchange ideas. But that's not the way it works. And this has contributed to this chaos that you're seeing right now. You've been seeing both sides of the political spectrum beating this anti-government nonsense. We started with the Tea Party libertarians, uh, you know, personal responsibility, fuck government, blah, blah, blah. Then we ended up with Bernie Sanders fist up in the air, you know, um, Anarchy, you know, revolution, fire in the background, you know. Well, you think 10 years of beating that kind of nonsense in people's brains is not going to have an effect? Of course it will. And it's on both sides. Again, I'm apolitical. I, don't, I couldn't care less. But I'm anti-Trump. And I'm anti-Trump because he's killing people through COVID-19 and inaction. It's just a fact. I mean, this pandemic could have been, for the most part, greatly uh, re, you know, mitigated. Some people say it could have been mitigated 90%. Imagine that. Right? My father died of COVID-19. Very sad. It's very sad to see. It's a rapid inflammation of your internals. That's what happens. And it's people that have weak immune systems, generally the elderly population. But that's not only the type of people that die. If you went in, God forbid, for a heart surgery and your immune system is compromised through the surgery and you catch COVID-19, you will go through the same process as an elderly person. Right? That's a heart surgery, something that's temporary. It doesn't matter what age you're at. Right? Any, any, any kind of disease, anything that happens that compromises your immune system, God forbid you get COVID-19, you're done. My father was talking to me on the phone and says, oh, you know, I, I feel a little bit better. And this is before he was tested. He was inside the hospital three times when Trump was saying, oh, everybody can get tested. No, no, you could not get tested. My father had all the symptoms. And more likely than not, my father contracted COVID-19 in the hospital. And I kept saying to my sister, because I was traveling from Philippines back to the U.S., I said, you know, the nurses are not, they're not protected properly. There's a bunch of cases all over the hospital that nobody knows about because we haven't tested. Okay, because I've seen COVID in Asia firsthand. It's not like I didn't see it. I was flying around um, in China and so forth. 
okay and, and i saw the lockdowns i saw the the precautions that was that were being taken and nobody was protesting nobody was freaking out nobody was saying you know marching to city hall with their guns and you know free america or free philippines or free china or whatever everybody was on lockdown everybody had masks anywhere you went you were uh, your temperature was taken right so i saw that and then i was looking at the us when i came to visit and it, back in february and everybody's like la 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 right and i told my sister because she was showing me through the um, uh, through the phone my, my father and i was seeing the nurse who was taking his blood and she was barely protected so that's where i think he got it and then he went subsequently he, he they they did the swab but they were not approved to do the test the second time he went into the hospital okay they did the swab again but was not approved again it was the third time which was about a, a month after um a month or so after he, he initially contracted it where they finally tested him which was three days before his death um when he went inside the hospital he was done his oxygen level was down to 70 72. they started doing the ivs and giving him some medicine and so forth and you know he started to kind of come around and i was talking to him at eight o'clock at night and he's like uh, you know because I, I i think i'm feeling better i think it's okay you know uh, i got another year or two to live uh, and he was optimistic literally within hours he was on a ventilator that night three days later his heart gave out they revived him and then they gave me the option they said look if you come in to see him we have to stop the medication because the only people that are allowed to see the COVID patients are the ones um, that um, that are going to stop the treatment and it's the last goodbye if you don't come um, we're going to continue the treatment now think about that ultimatum that you got to make why can i go see my father you know why can i go see him and you continue the treatment see see if you know if he improves and so forth it's a very hard decision to make you know about your father but this is what's going on and, and you, you see people on facebook who you know they don't understand this disease when i asked the, the doctor i said you know what happened you know, he, he was talking on the phone, and then suddenly he's, uh, he's like, "This is the problem. That that COVID creates a massive inflammation of the internals, very rapidly. We don't know which one to fix first. So his kidneys, his blood pressure started to fall off. His oxygen level started to fall off, even with the ventilator. His kidneys started to give out. His organs started to fail, and you know, it's game over, more or less." It's, it's just a very weird disease and uh, it's a novel virus right we don't know much about it we're trying to figure it out uh, we come up with models and then we go on lockdown and I'm going outside and I see people running around it's not a lockdown this was not a lockdown it, nothing to do with Asia lockdown this was a make pretend lockdown and it only lasted really a couple of weeks we didn't start testing till March 16th Right. Korea already had done 140,000 tests, and we were at 2,000 in the U.S. So naturally, the the disease is going to spread, and and then you know you hear people are like, well, it's not spreading here in Iowa. It's like, oh, geez, you know that's not how it works. <laughs> you know you have flare-ups, flare-ups, and of course you're going to have the biggest flare-ups in the biggest cities, where the uh, density of population is highest, and and where the major airports are, right? Um, you're not going to have it in Iowa. Uh, eventually, you know, the virus moves along the, the country and you're going to have flare-ups here and flare-ups there. And they talk about these, oh, you know, it's in an old age home and he said this and she did that. This is noise. This is noise. There is a virus and this virus kills. It's a plague for some people and it's the sniffles for other people. So we are human missiles, right? So, again, to kind of recap, the, the handling of this whole situation is not correct. This is not normal. If you compare it to Greece, right? Greece went on a full lockdown immediately. And they said, look, you want to get out of your house? Okay, you can either go to the hospital, get food, or go to the drugstore. <clears throat> drug 
that these are your options and you have to text uh, why you're going out to the government and then they'll send your code you put a piece of paper where you're going where your, your address is and if you're found anywhere outside of that um, route okay and you have the code uh, from the government on the bottom of the page if you're found anywhere else you're gonna pay 150 euro fine and and that's how they combated the virus I mean it's almost non-existent in Greece now uh, there was 24 hours without a case uh, there was 19 cases today 12 came from Qatar right because um, now what they do is if you enter the country um, you go 24 hours into a hotel they test you they do whatever it is that you have to do and then they release you okay uh, and then you know they have phases that they're opening up uh, Greece right now but they have the right parameters for Greece to open up the US on the other hand doesn't on a on a, on a country level right but on a lot of the local levels right they're fine so when people are complaining they're like look there's not too many cases over here why are we locked down and so forth and they're right because this has to be dealt on the local level but supported by the federal government that's the point right so we have to have testing and tracing and, and all these things it's not it's not a, it's not a, a a switch a light on a light off it's not the way it works and you can't do it on a national level in, in a country so big as the US you have to do it on the local level it, it, it's just the way it is you see flare-ups here you fix it over here you shut it down over there you do you know you do whatever it needs to do but all this is great and dandy but what I want to go back to what I said on Twitter when I first started this that the social economic impact from COVID-19 is going to be huge it's going to be Great Depression style stuff and uh, a number of my subscribers who were saying well this could happen and this could happen and you can run around chasing your tail trying to figure out what's going to blow up and uh, when you're doing macroeconomics and you're looking at things on a macro level you can't do that because there's so many moving parts right you cannot do that because you're trying to predict what is going to blow up well you can do it what you what we do know on a macro standpoint what we do know is that when recessions come bad things are exposed weaknesses uh, in the economy are exposed that's what happens and believe me they're gonna pop their head up and you're gonna notice them um, this is nothing like it was in 2000 with the dot-com this is nothing like it is um, in uh, 2008, which was a banking crisis caused by FAS 157, and then ultimately led to a housing crisis. And that's what I mean, that you have things in a recession that occur that were not there, and you don't know which ones are going to blow up. And in this case now, what we've learned is that one incident in, in a string of many for decades one incident set off a massive massive social unrest in the US in the middle of a pandemic that is going to create a wave two that's what we have learned okay this is this is very bad because this is the kind of stuff that creates Arab Spring Civil War and, and as far-fetched and stupid as it might sound and you think it might be like the uh, other times where you have a protest for a while and then people go away and whatever and maybe it is maybe it's not okay but the conditions when you have food to income exceed 60 percent when you have um, uh, uh, 40 41 million people unemployed when you have uncertainty when you have a lockdown and during the lockdown domestic violence you know, spy, uh, skyrocketed by the way um, uh, you have lockdown you have social media that is feeding you that the government is evil you have an unfit leader that cannot unite people and is always blaming blaming everything and anything else uh, other than himself um, w w when you when all this comes together it's a perfect storm this cannot be predicted 
this cannot be printed out of existence this MMT stuff that oh we're gonna just print money and everything will be fine no the stock market is going straight up with 40 million unemployed remember that we had the longest job expansion in history it took us a decade to go from 10 percent to 3.4 percent unemployment we had uh, everything firing on all cylinders we had tax cuts we had um, all this positive news prior to all this and then suddenly in September we started getting repo problems and the Fed is like don't worry about it could anybody forecast COVID-19 absolutely not um, we started having a slow economy which was leading to a what I called back then prior that when we do get a recession it's going to be a technical kind of a recession and the reason it's going to be a technical recession is because there's going to be stimulus that's going to come in. They're going to come in with a lot of money, and they're going to they're going to uh, push the market back up. It's going to be a technical kind of bear market. And then COVID-19 came. And then I said, look, this is this is bad. You're going to first see uh, airlines start to have big difficulties. Okay. Um, then you're going to have retail. And then after retail, you're going to have earnings per share hit. That's what's going to happen. And I and I, I was saying that all through end of February, beginning of March. And I had told, I, I told some of my friends, I said, look, I'm going to go more retail. I'm going to be a little bit more open about what I'm doing. I'm going to. I'm not going to keep beating this MMT drum and, and so forth. People don't understand it. People want to believe what they want to believe. Forget about uh, how true MMT is, right? Uh, and even even Mosler, you know, uh, started to, to get it that, you know, the way MMT was going was just more political than it was economic. And no matter how much uh, I or the pure MMTers uh, tried to explain that, there's weaknesses in the MMT model, right? Nobody was really listening because they were too busy looking at the memes, too too busy at the sound bites, too busy at the politics, right? The Bernie Sanders fist up in the air. We can print this. You can have free 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 this. And um, you know how how do you how do you take a meme that's so simple and and you give the correct explanation? And people will listen. They won't. They won't because they want to believe what they want to believe. It's easier. That's why they say, you know, it's easier to lie to somebody than to tell them the truth. Right? It's true. It's true then as it is today. So we've done the MMT everything now. This is end game MMT, and I've been saying this for a long time. Why is it MD end game MMT? Because you cannot print what is going on. You can't print it away. This is what economics is about. Economics is not about incubator, where everything in a perfect world, if you do this and you tweak that and you add some more of this and you do it, that you, everything is going to go well. Okay, that's why I don't like models. Um, that's why I, I I don't believe in these theories anymore. Right? Remember, when I started this, I wanted to prove MMT right, that MMT works in the real world, and it does to a certain extent, right? But it does not in the way that people think. It, it 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 works by creating a savings bubble, an excess of deficits that flow through the productive and sometimes above the productive economy into the savings bubble. Right? That's the greatest contribution of MMT, that you can explain it to somebody that a dollar is like water through a hose and it, it, it leads to something. It ends up somewhere. And that place that it ends up is through a mechanism that households must save in order for profits to exist. Now, I didn't, I couldn't articulate this as well uh, until um, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, um, Edmond I forgot it was ASX, AX. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while, but I'll, I'll I will try to f to find the name and I'll put it in the link below in the video. But he's the one that 
that are articulated best, you know, and it says, no, 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 it's not, you know, it's not government that equals our savings. <laughs> it's not ours, right? Even though I was saying the same thing, he articulated it better. He said it's their savings, meaning that those dollars go to the top 5%. I call it 5%, other people call it 1%, call it whatever you want. That's where the money goes. That's where excessive deficits go. It's not a panacea that you can just print money and everything will be fine. And remember, 10 years ago, this was the complete opposite. <laughs> that we're going to hyperinflate, we're going to blow up, and the world's coming to an end, buy gold, buy silver, crash JP Morgan, remember that stuff, right? So it's so funny how we went from that to the other extreme, that we can just print to infinity and every, nothing would ever happen. It's just, it's a, again, as a macro guy, when I sit back and I look at what the public says and what they believe and how opinion is swayed and it's just fa it's fascinating to me and this is why I love it I, I, I learned so much from it but despite that despite understanding the savings bubble despite getting and explaining it to other people I didn't trade it that way and the reason I didn't trade it that way was I didn't I couldn't believe that it would have such a dramatic impact so quickly. And that completely surprised me. I was, uh, I was, uh, I started, I was bearish back in uh, September. And look what happened. The stock market went straight up. And what would they tell you every day? You know, repos are increased. Repos are not QE. Repos are only temporary. Repos, and they kept increasing and increasing and increasing. And it's like, what the fuck, man? You know, so what happens in a repo? Repo is like a QE. You give your bonds, I give you cash. That's what it is. And that cash was going into the stock market. And if you, if the bonds were to start to crash, well, guess what? The collateral that was, the bond collateral at the Fed was not worth as much as it was. Right, but that's why they had to pay the interest up front. But even with the interest rate being as low as it was for that collateral of bonds in the repos, you know, if God forbid the the, the bond market you know, blew up, right? If the if, the, if the, the Fed did not continuously pump that repo stuff, well, guess what? Things got really ugly really quickly. So they were almost as the the drug dealer, if you will. You know, to use a Peter Schiff term, the, the Fed was literally the drug, the drug dealer that was pumping up asset prices via via repos, and the, the entire time they're telling you that we're lowering rates uh, as a mid-cycle adjustment. What mid-cycle adjustment? Why are banks not lending to each other, man? Who are these banks? They wouldn't tell us. It was a secret. And it's like, no, 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 no. This stuff should not be happening in a healthy 3.4% unemployment and we can't even grow the economy at 2.5%. It's not, this is not normal. This is not the way it's supposed to work. Something is wrong somewhere. And then, of course, COVID-19. And some people are like, oh, yeah, you're saying that you predicted COVID-19. I didn't predict shit, dude. I'm not, don't even, for those people who try to play that game, get out of here, dude. I didn't predict anything. Did I track it? Yes. Did I did I, I I understand the impact of it? Yes. That's not the same thing. I was not predicting COVID-19 in October and November and whatever. But again, getting back to the to the savings bubble. So then we got to this March time period where they finally acknowledged that the economy is fucked and. Uh, People are not going out. Con, you know, 70% of GDP is consumption. They started to test. It was too late. It wasn't enough testing. The market crashed. And the next thing you know, you have the Fed stepping in and handing out trillions of dollars like it was candy. Now, some of that, I'm not saying that they, sh they shouldn't print ever. I'm not saying that uh, they shouldn't have taken some of the measures that they did. Absolutely, they should, of course. Um, but not excessively, and not to the to, to corporations. I don't agree with that. Am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. I don't agree with that. 
this is not a this is not a 2008 banking problem. This is an econ this is a deep rooted economic problem caused by a pandemic. You're not going to print the virus away. We 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 got rid of bank reserves. That's 1.5 trillion dollars there that can flow into asset prices. We deficit we promised deficits of 3 trillion by June. That's 4.5. We've QED, QED another four trillion. We're talking about trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, while you get the unemployment, you get that six hundred dollar whatever. I don't know what exactly what it is, uh, uh, gift or whatever, right? Um, stimulus. It's not a stimulus. You're trying to to stave off, you know, hunger. And, and nobody seems to understand what's really happening in the economy. They don't get it. That You just printed up $7 trillion, man. Like, are you, are you kidding? You just pumped that all into the asset prices. So, so now you're seeing that the chart is, you know, they're all lagging. All lagging. Everything was showing fine. In fact, even till today, we have not called this a recession. Because you need two consecutive quarters for that to, to occur. We've managed to level off COVID-19, uh, flatten the curve or whatever they call it. We've managed to do that with the, the partial lockdown. We managed to kind of try to reopen, which again, I don't agree with it. <clears throat> not, not the way it's being done, right? You gotta have the numbers. And that's, that's what's fascinating with Trump. <laughs> That he'll, he'll sit up, he'll like, okay, we need to do this, 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 and this. Oh, look what they're making us do. Well, you, it's your administration, dude. It's your administration. You came up with this, and now you're going against your own shit? Like, <laughs> it's it's maddening. It's maddening. And then you have people who are just diehard Trump fans. And no matter what happens, Trump, Trump, Trump. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter 100,000 people die. Doesn't matter that another 100,000 people can die. It doesn't matter... You know, open up the economy, you know, die for the economy, you know, make America great again. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? <laughs> what kind of <laughs> insanity is that? What? I don't understand it. And uh, it's, it boggles my mind. It really does. But anyway, we started to open up. And then we get this incident, which is deep-rooted. And then you get the protests, justifiably. And then you get the, the the riots, and then again we, you know, we're getting into a situation where the perfect storm is hitting America, and we walk outside our doors and see the shops are all boarded up, and you know, wondering how how does this end? How how do you stop this? How do when does it stop? And I don't even know how you convince these protesters. Forget about the looters. How do you convince the protesters that things are going to change? What are they looking for? How do you convince somebody in the future that this won't happen? Or it's not that it won't happen, because you're always going to have some idiot going to do some stupid shit, right? We can't we can't keep going through riots and protests because of stupid people. Because you can't stop it. Uh, but you can reduce it. You can enact laws that are going to be, you know, they're going to have teeth. You can start prosecuting. But how do you prove that to them? And I don't think there's an answer. I don't think there's a clear answer. Uh, you know, so many things have to take place in order for this to to improve. So, you know, my my situation, my situation. Forget about my situation. The situation, from my perspective, it looks bleak, ugly. And these, again, are symptoms from the COVID-19 that you cannot print away. Forget about MMT. Forget about it. So, this is 
this has been going on for a long time. It's a Swiss cheese effect, right? You got different slices and the narrow goes right through every single hole without touching the Swiss cheese. It's it's a sequence of events that, that started all the way back in 2008 with this anti-government, uh, the 99%, the this, uh, bailing out Wall Street, the, the QE, the, uh, you know, anti-government stuff. And that's why they voted Trump in, right? They want to change. People want to change. They wanted somebody that's not political. Okay, we're going to drain the swamp. We're going to do this. And they voted him in. I mean, whatever. And look what's happened. Uh, we're about to go into martial law in the U.S. You know, could you imagine if Obama did this? Oh, geez. <laughs> right? But this is what's happening now. And if you think that the stock market is an indication of prosperity to come for you and your fellow Americans. In this case, I'm not talking about other cases, but in this case, if you think the stock market is an indication, you are fooling yourself. What the stock market going straight up is telling you is that the savings bubble that I've been talking about and again, I'm going to say it, I, I haven't traded it as well as I should have. The, the savings bubble is alive and well. And MMT only creates more inequality. It creates asset price inflation. Stocks, bonds, real estate, and so forth. Bottoms occur when there's fear. We don't have fear. What we have and have had is buy the dippers. Buy the dippers. Nibble on the way down. Uh, buy quote unquote distressed assets. No. That's not what a bottom looks like. What you're seeing is a wave two. That people believe that things are going to go back to normal. And this always happens. It, cre it, it creates what, what I call an M pattern in the stock market. And if there's a belief that there's um, things are going to go back to normal. And then reality hits. And when wave three, reality hits. And again, I don't know what's going to be the cause. Maybe it's going to be these riots. Maybe a culmination of things or whatever. When it hits... You're, we're going to end up in a situation at some point, like we were in 2008, but worse, where things are going to look so bleak. There's going to be so much fear. There's going to be so many people that are, are just, that are, well, fuck the stock market, buy, you know, buy bricks, God is not making any more land. You know, it's kind of like the same kind of cycle, right? And that's the point of macroeconomics, to understand these things when they happen. But you're going you're to get to the point where everybody believes that the economy would never recover ever again. That's a bottom. That's a bottom. Just like tops, that nobody believes that it is a top. Um, and they're not going to believe it because of euphoria. And that's what we've been experiencing now for about a year. Um, uh, on a macro level, you're going to see that the fear is going to set in at some point. And things are never going to be good. And the stock market should never be bought. And things are bad that's where we're heading uh, I've gone as far as to say that this is going to be an economic depression now they're gonna you know when I say they I mean Fed government and so forth they're gonna they're gonna you know put lipstick on a, on a pig they're gonna tell you no 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 it's not like that it's not like that it's not like that no it's it is like that it always is like that it will never change its physics it's you know the way herds move it is coming I don't know when and they're gonna try to stimulate it they're gonna try to pump more trillions it's not gonna work when everybody believes that you can just print money and everything is gonna be fine that's when you know that it doesn't work anymore it's bogus it's bullshit and uh, as, as we joke on, on my chats and my Patreon, you know, oh, look, Peter Schiff was right after all. <laughs>
right? Uh, it pains me to say that. Uh, so, I've covered a lot, gave my views. I'm giving you uh, what I think is the best analysis that I, I can come up with, given the time allowed. Uh, you know, it's not good. Just think, just think of the anti-riot crowd. What if they start? What if a uh, somebody shoots somebody? What happens then? Right? It's scary. It's scary, and nobody seems to really be scared. They're kind of politicizing everything. You know, oh, it's uh, the liberals. The, it's Antifa. It's uh, China. It's they're, they're not realizing what's going on. And that's the scariest part to me. They don't really realize. They think they can just print money and, oh, you know, there'll be more stimulus coming. The, the virus is just going to go away. Or the protesters are just going to stop. The deaths are not going to continue to rise. The coronavirus, you know, infection is not going to, you know, just remember, there's 340 million Americans. We only have, what, 6 million now, almost, cases, right? <laughs> That's uh, 334 million to go. 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet. We still don't have a vaccine. And even if we do have a vaccine, there's so much disinformation out there that right now they're saying only 50% of Americans are willing to, to, to take the vaccine. And I assure you, that with this social media confirmation bias, you know, hearts and thumb me up and these radical cults, that's what they are. They're cults that clump together and self-reinforce stupid shit. They will convince 10, 20 percent of that 50 percent not to do the vaccine because it's a Bill Gates conspiracy and Alex Jones stuff. So we really, really have major fucking problems, huge problems, right? Big problems. And the stock market is going up every day, every day, every day. Why? Because things are good. Because airplanes uh, are going to be flying at 82% capacity. That we're going to just go back to normal in the next six months. I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But my analysis doesn't show that. So, I don't want to panic anybody, but at the same time, I, I want you to be aware. Um, at least my point of view, and there's many points of view, right? <laughs> where facts are few, experts are many. But unlike COVID-19, where we can kind of model it and kind of figure out how many cases we have and so forth. You can't do that with a riot. Can't do it. You don't know how bad it can get. And I just kind of briefly want to go over how did Arab Spring begin? The Arab Spring began when uh, I think he was selling produce and he was he had a little cart that he would drag around and go sell. And this man was feeding I think 10 mouths, eight, seven, I, I don't know, but it was a lot of people who were depending on his income so they can eat. Now in Tunisia and uh, most of the world, there's corruption. There's a lot of corruption. And the man finally saved up enough money to go out and get a car, an old beat up truck that, you know, instead of him pulling it around, you know, he can sell his produce in the car. And a police officer comes comes up to him and says, Oh, my friend, you're doing really good, huh? Uh, business is good? Give me more bribe. And the man, out of his frustration, he just, he he reached his limits. And he just, fuck this, man. And he poured, poured gasoline all over his body and lit himself on fire. He just, he was that frustrated. He just, he couldn't handle it anymore because he was trying his absolute best to provide for himself and, and the people that he loved. And that's how it started. That's how Arab Spring 
started. Right? Sound familiar? Well, let's go to Syria now. What happened in Syria? Apparently, a um, bunch of kids went up on the wall and rode down with Assad. Uh, and then the police went out looking for the for the kids. So they took all all the kids in that village or city or town or whatever. And they put them in jail. They started torturing them, confess who did it and whatever. And then the, you know, the mothers went to the police station and they say, please, you know, my, my son is innocent, this and that. And the police chief said, you know what, forget about your sons. Uh, you'll never see them again. Uh, go home and make more sons. And if you don't have a man to make you another son, I got police officers here that are more than willing to help you. Oh, fuck. Uh, Assad, much like Trump, did not condemn that. And the protest began. And then Syria went up on, you know, lit up on fire. And you, you know, mil, million, more than a million people have died since, right? So that's that's how this these social unrest begin. And in both cases, food to income was more than 60%. Right? Um, job opportunities were, were not abundant. Poverty. Now. You're saying, yeah, but this is America is different. Yeah, but to Americans, see, Americans don't understand these things. I've, I've traveled the world. I've seen things that most Americans haven't seen. So to an American, if they're not going to the mall every single day buying stupid shit, to them, it's the same as if they are in poverty. Remember, 70% of GDP is consumption. So they don't understand how good they had it, up, at least up till now, and I'm talking about the vast majority. I'm not talking about the riots and so forth. How good you have it here in the U.S. relative to the rest of the world, right? And the feeling, though, is the same. The feeling is, is as if they're poor, as if you know they're victims and so forth. And you, you, know, you can argue that there, some people are, some people aren't, and whatever, all that stuff. You can argue whatever you want, but I'm just telling you that definitely the U.S. is better than most countries in the world. But the feeling of being a victim is the same. So now we get this Floyd incident. And we're getting the, the riots and we're getting the protests. Justifiably for the protests. And now we, the U.S., the civilized country... And what is civilized? Civilized is to protect the weak. That's what being civil is about. Right? To help each other, to love each other, to to make sure we don't harm each other. That's that's civilized. This rioting stuff is not civilized. And civilization is very fragile. We take it for granted, but it's very fragile. Right? That's that's the problem with Trump. He's not a leader. He's the fragility is is is, ex, is exposed under a, a set of circumstances that most people don't model in their economic theories. You can print, but you're not going to fix it. And here we are in this dire situation that potentially could become a lot lot worse. And people are buying the dips, nibbling on the way down. Stock market is going up. This will pass. Everything is fine. It's a forward-looking indicator. The book said so. Buy when there's blood in the street. I don't think so. So, I'll end it here. Um, be careful out there. Look at the cause of what sparked all this. Don't look at the looting. Don't um, don't let your attention be diverted uh, to the looting. It needs to be addressed. It needs to stop. Um, again, how do you prove it to these people? I don't know. It's just be careful. 
uh, wave three is going to come in the stock market. Fear is going to come in, this, in, in the economy, in the stock market. Consumption, I don't think, is going to go back to what it was in January 2020. That means that the economy is going to struggle for a while, based on my analysis. I could be wrong. Uh, and, uh, and things are not looking good. And the stock market is not an indicator of future uh, economic prosperity this time. Other times, different. Okay? All right, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.